because I can see the. Okay, thank you. Little things mean a lot. Little things mean a lot is a maximum with a lot of meaning for marriage. Most husbands and wives can benefit from being reminded of this. The following lit, uh, list, uh, including the sum of those little things, they are offered with the hope that they will encourage you to consider which of them could be helpful in your marriage. Wives, in the particular, are usually deeply touched and encouraged to do such things. And husband can certainly be positively affected when their wives take the time to do the little things that mean so much. Little things, but it's very big things. Little things to change the life. Many, many years ago, there is a, I forget which year, but I, I don't remember exactly which year, I don't remember the, the name of a president, the president of uh, Morocco and president of uh, the France, they almost, uh, I mean, they start the war between Morocco and France. Of course, uh, France is a much powerful country than Morocco. Do you know what, what was happening? The war almost stopped, but no more war. How? The president of, uh, president of uh, the France, he say, I understand you. Can you imagine one word, I understand you? No more war. <laughs> Can you imagine? The little one word, you know, prevented the war. I understand you. Yeah. And then little things means a lot. My wife liked the orange. The, her favorite fruit is orange. And then when I got married, she was a sick. Terribly sick. She couldn't move. After the Sunday service, service, she go back to the. We go, went back to the home, and she would lie on the bed and she sweat. And then, she's terribly sick. And I ask her, "What would you like to eat?" She say, mm -hmm. "Orange." When she say orange, do you know what I did? I gone to many shops. Unfortunately, around that time around the 28 years ago. Most of the shop on, on, on the cross on Sunday. Not Tesco, Tesco cross. Sainsbury cross. Most of the shop cross. Even the off license shop is uh, nearly all cross. Very hard. Do you know what I was? I was driving over one hour. One hour I was looking for one thing, orange. I, sp I look at myself and I speak to myself, what I'm doing now? Because I love my wife, I'm looking for orange. I spent uh, over one hour. I went to so many shops, the shop closed. And then for me, if I, if I like the, the, you know, orange, if I couldn't find the, like, the, I easily give up within five minutes. But for her, I'm looking for orange. I spend more than one hour. And finally, I realized that there's no orange, no possible. And finally, I end up uh, at the petrol station I, and I bought the pure orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to home. I told my wife I couldn't find any orange. This is a pure orange juice. I'm so sorry. And I gave them the orange juice. I just think about that. If you love somebody, you bring little things, but it's a meaning a lot. And then unfortunately, people, they are not grateful. If my wife said to me, you spend over one hour and you bring the only pure orange juice. If you speak to me like that, I'll be upset. Do you understand? She never understand how I spend my time, my energy, my effort. Do you understand? Therefore, I think appreciation is very, very important. Be grateful with the small things. Can you say to each other, let us uh, be grateful 
said to each other, let us be grateful. Be grateful. It's very important. Be grateful. Appreciation. It's a bit for small things. Yeah. I enjoyed a very nice dinner tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, I think so. You, you did, eh? Here on the floor. Mm. What? Yeah, yeah. Ellie, you did, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I can see that now it's, in, it's in the, the, the copy, the mug is gone, and I can see that. Thank you so much. Do you understand? Thank you so much, is, uh, your brother asked, George, you make the new house on the top floor. <laughs> well, well done. Thank you so much. And I'm um, uh, willing to pay for the paint and the brush. And thank you so much, brother Alexander. He said, I will pay. You pay. Thank you so much. Do you understand that kind of uh, willing to can somebody do something for for the glory of God? God remember. If somebody not remember you, but God remember what you did, how wonderful! You know, human being is uh, we don't have a good memory. <laughs> we will forget sooner or later, but God remember. Amen. God remember. But therefore, but remember the little things mean a lot. We began with the suggestion for wives, and look at your, your your note. Pray for your husband daily. How, how many wives in here? Any wives in here? Did you do you pray for your husband daily? No. I think you need to repent your sins. <laughs> <laughs> I pray for my wife daily. Do you pray for your husband daily? Well done. You are a very good wife. <laughs> <laughs> Did you understand? It's good to pray for your husband daily. It's so important. Don't tell me I love my neighbor. But who is your next neighbor? N neighbor? Most close neighbor? Your husband, your wife, and your children. Yeah? Pray for your husband daily. Show him. Especially this suggestion for wife. Show him you love him unconditionally. Yeah? Can you, you know, how many wives? Can you lift up hand once again? Your wives, yeah? All the wives. How many of you want to be your wives one day? Do you want to be a wife one day? <laughs> <laughs> for you. You want to, eh? Can you see that? Show him you love him unconditionally. You know, most of people love somebody conditionally. You love me, therefore I love you. You hate me, I hate you. That is a terrible. Do you understand? Can you love uh, one another unconditionally? Not give and take. Do you understand? Unconditional means like agape love. Do you understand? Jesus loves us, uh, agape love. What does it mean agape love? Unconditional love. Unconditional love. God loves all of us. And tell him you think he is the greatest. Who is the most greatest man in your life, Sister Annie? Who is your greatest man in your life? After Jesus and uh, in your husband, this is very very important. You can, you can express, husband, my my darling, you are uh, number one in my life. Mm -hmm. After Jesus, this is very very important. Yeah, tell him you think he is the greatest, or show him you believe in him. You believe in him. It's very very important. You believe in him. Do you know, if your husband meet with uh, you know, many, many people, sometimes meet with uh, some woman, and you can say to your husband, I believe in you. You don't come to others, I know that. If you encourage your husband like that, your husband uh, never try to commit adultery. I believe in you. You are a mighty man of God. Speak like this. Don't talk negatively to him or about him. Do you know, if you speak about your husband negatively in front of your children. 
terrible damage. Unfortunately, white children is um, manipulate and disobedient to family. Children listen what mother say about the daddy. If your wife say about the husband, uh, your husband beautifully, wonderfully, you can say to your children, don't you know that most powerful daddy in this world is your daddy, do you know that? Wonderful man of God. He is a mighty man of God. Your daddy is a you know, loving and kind daddy. You know, never speak and never talk about uh, your husband negatively. Never, ever. If you speak like that, your life will ruin. Your life will damage. You sowing the seed, that kind of seed, and you get it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Also, tell him daily that you love him. Yeah? Can you tell him, I love you daily? Show him, show him that you enjoy being with, with him. Uh, it's very important being with a husband. Uh, oh, it's the greatest joy. Listen to him when he talks with you. Yeah. Hug him often. Kiss him tenderly and romantically at times. You know, for you know, for Korean men to to holding the Korean wife is a, a, a long time so our our father generation is uncomfortable. Do, do you know that? But in this generation you can holding the hand and working together. I don't know, Elder, Elder Paul, Paul Jew, you holding the, your wife's hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good husband. <laughs> Good to hold. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And then show him that you enjoy the uh, true of sex. Express interest in his interest. Fix his favorite meal at an expected time. These are little things, but it mean a lot. You know, not only birthday, not only you know, anniversary of your wedding, but just an unexpected day, you can prepare some very nice meal for your husband. And then um, demonstrate your dedication to him in public. It's very important. Not secretly, publicly. I'm standing with my husband. I'm supporting for my husband with uh, all my heart. If you speak like that, how wonderful. <coughs> yeah, your husband. Uh, do great things by encouragement of a wife is very important. And do things for him he doesn't expect. Unexpectedly, you can do something for your husband. How beautiful. Show others you are proud to be his wife. Yeah. It's very important. You can tell your friend and family, I'm very proud to be a wife of my husband, if you speak publicly, beautiful. You do sometimes, you do time, yeah? It's very good, very, very important. And then stress, uh, stress is a strength, not his weakness. Yeah, not his weakness. Don't try to mold him into someone else. This is very, very important. Most of wife try to control the husband, try to mold the husband to be a somebody. That's the main problem. Do you understand? Your husband is very unique. How many of wives try to change your husband by your own power, by your own skin? If you try to do, you will waste your time. You will waste your energy. You, your life will ruin, actually. Never try to do it. One lady in America, she tried to change her husband. She spent over 30 years. She, she wrote so many books about the marriage. And then Nunu Waka spoke to her. You start a new life. If you start to change by the grace of God, and I will change your husband. And you know what happened? She come before God, Lord, change me. Mold me. Transform my life. When she come before the Lord, and then she start to 
uh, uh, new life. And when she uh, she become a you know transform the woman, and then automatically God change her husband. But most of the uh, family problem is they try to change husband and change a wife, and reveal in his joy share his disappointment. You can open your heart to share what is a, your enjoyment, what is a disappointment. You can share. Share is very, very important, important which means uh, communication. <coughs> communication is very, very important, communication. Do you understand? Somebody, your husband asks your husband, uh, so the wife asks husband, give me pear. And then husband give the apple. <laughs> it is a good communication. Communication is very, very important for each other. And then show him your favorite times are with him. You can share with your husband, this is my best time uh, with you. If you don't mind, can you spend time with me, such as this time? It's good to know. Show him you respect him more than anyone. That's very important. Do you understand? If you do not respect your husband, you do not respect anybody. I'm sorry, I'm telling the truth. If you do not respect your husband, how can you say that I respect this man, I respect the pastor, I respect the that no, no, nonsense. If you do not respect your husband, you cannot respect anybody. Impossible. Respect your husband more than anyone else. Leave I love you not in an unrespected place. You can write down I love you yeah, in front of you know, the husband the car seat. Or the, on the Bible, I love you, and Jesus love you, and then, and you can write down like that. Let him hear you thank God for him. You understand? When you pray, Father, I thank you for my husband, because of my husband, my life is so blessed. I, I'm so grateful. If you pray like that, ah, how wonderful! Yeah, this is some suggestion for wives. And then another one, suggestion for husband. So I love you several times a day. Deacon David, how many times you say to your wife, I love you per day? How many times you say to your wife? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Never. No, you need to open your mouth and say it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it to Can you say it to I love you? <laughs> Can you do it ten times per day? Okay. <laughs> you know, when I get married, I speak to myself, Father, help me. I want to say to my wife, I love you ten times. Sometimes I forget, do you know what if I look at my wife, I say to her, I love you, I love you, I love you, <laughs> ten times. <laughs> you say, no. But it's good to s express your, your feeling to tell your wife, I love you, and you can speak several times a day. Tell her she is beautiful and often. Yeah? Yeah, it's very important. Can you say to how many husbands in here? Husband. Your husband? Uh, Paul, your husband. <laughs> can you say? Can you say to your wife, "You are beautiful"? Say to each other. Can you say to your wife, "You are beautiful"? I oh, know. Look at the <laughs> look at your wife. <laughs> this is so important. Say to wife, "I love you, and you're beautiful." And then this is very important. Yeah. Yeah, and kiss her several times a day, hug her several times a day, put your arms around her often, and hold her hand while walking. Always sit by her uh, when possible. Always open door for her. And this is a true story in Canada. When uh, some gangster tried to attack their some family, they are, they are deacons, Christian family, Korean family. Then what happened? There's uh, the car park in the big in the supermarket. 
when the gangster tried to attack and the husband and wife will come and they try to get in the car, guess what happened? When the gangster come and his uh, husband, you know what he did? He pushed his wife, he opened the door, he got inside the car. <laughs> and the gangster saw his wife outside and the husband inside. They never seen in their life. The, <laughs> the gangster have uh, great pity on her. And then uh, they're so shocked, and then they left. <laughs> and then she was so upset. She couldn't forgive her husband for 10 years. How dare, when the gangster come, you push me and you go inside the car, and she was in danger. Do you understand? Of course, he asked for forgiveness, but for her, it's terrible, terrible upset. But can you protect uh, your wife? Amen? Protect your wife. It's very, very important. Yeah. Let God put you as husband to protect your wife and supporting for your wife. Look, always helpful with the chair, uh, the chairs, etc. Ask her opinion when make a decision. I think most of men they make uh, some some decision without uh, you know discussing with the wife. That's a man's character. But ask her opinion. Show interest in what she does. Yeah. Do you know the, her interest? What is her interest? Yeah. Yeah. Only Jesus? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can you can buy the nice bag or this. Yeah, it's good too. Yeah, you know that your your wife's interest. You can impress her. It's inter is in to know interest of your wife. And take her uh, flowers unexpectedly. Yeah. Yeah. How often your husband buy the uh, flower for for wife? How often? Once a year. <laughs> Once a year you bought the flower <laughs> for wedding anniversary, yeah? But uh, you can you can buy some flower unexpectedly. And, and, and bless her. Plan a surprise night out. Ask if there is a things you can do for her. Show affection in public place. Train yourself to think of her first. Show her you are proud to be her husband. Train yourself to be uh, romantic. Write a love note on the bathroom mirror. Call during the day to say I love you. Always call and tell her if you will be late. Praise her in the front of others. Let her hear you thank God for her. Yeah? Can you thank God for her? This is very, very important. Of course, uh, these details, the, so this list are not uh, exhaustive. The number of things that mm, can be done by building of a marriage may be limitless. When our imagine, imaginations are in summary, we have seen the marriage needed to be built on God's foundational truth. Do you understand? If you build the, your house on the God's foundational truth, it's a very stable family, strong family. Unfortunately, many, many Christian families, you know, are built on the not on the truth by some secular things. That is why the family is shaken, unstable. And the marriage should be the relationship that blessed each partner. The specific responsibilities are given to the wife and husband. The communication is one of the important building block of the strong marriage. Lastly, we have been Reminded that little things mean a lot. May God bless us as we strive, strive to put these uh, reminders into the uh, practice. Can you see that the power of forgiveness? This forgiveness is very, very important. <coughs> Unfortunately, people, they don't forgive each other. Do you know the, what is the... <coughs> what is the main message after Jesus resurrected from the dead? Anybody knows? Peace be with you, Peace be with you and 
three things he mentioned after he resurrected. You know, somebody died and raised up and then speak is very important things. Peace be with you and receive the Holy Spirit and forgive. Three things, these three. Can you look at the John chapter 20? Book of, book of John chapter 20. If you look at the book of chapter 20, John chapter 20, verse 20, sorry, 19. John chapter 20, verse 19, on the evening of the first day. Which day? Evening of first day, which is a Sunday evening, yeah? Sunday evening. Can you see that? John chapter 20, verse 19, on the evening of the first day of the week. When the disciples were together with the door locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came stood among them and said, Peace be with you. You see, first word when Jesus come through the world, the door locked, but Jesus come through the world and speak to the disciples, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and the side. Disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. You see, Jesus speak to them two times, peace be with you, peace be with you, yeah. And then he say, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And, uh, and with the breath on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, you see. Second message is receive the Holy Spirit. And then third message is verse 23, about the forgiveness. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You see, we have to forgive one another. Therefore, after Jesus resurrected, he speak three things, peace be with you, and receive the Holy Spirit, and forgive one another. It's very, very important. Even, do you know the Lord's Prayer? Matthew chapter 6. Can you see the Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 6 about the Lord's Prayer? This is the best prayer in the in the whole world is a Lord's prayer. If you look at the Matthew, yeah, chapter six, yeah, verse five. When you pray, you have to pray like this. And verse nine, sorry, Matthew chapter six, verse nine. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debt, as you also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from the evil one. Can you see that? Jesus speak about the forgive our sins, forgive our debtors, and we also forgive our debtors. You see, Jesus teach us about the forgiveness, and he speak again. Can you imagine Jesus speak two times? That means very important about forgiveness. Look at verse 14. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive them, if the men, their sins, the your father will not forgive your sins, which means you must forgive their brothers and sisters' sins, and then you receive the forgiveness. Do you understand? Forgiveness is very, very important. Peter asked Jesus, "Is okay I can forgive someone seven times?" What did Jesus say? Seventy times by seven. If you calculate, how many? Four hundred ninety times. Can you forgive somebody? 490 times. If you forgive that person four times, you are doing very well. But 490 times, which means unlimited. You have to forgive that person continuously. This is what God requires. You have to forgive them. Therefore, in the family, every family, in Europe, Africa, Asia, in Middle East, South and North America, Australia, Oceania, every continent, they need uh, forgiveness. Look at your note. The power of forgiveness. Difference and disagreement do not need to destroy the ma marriage. Can I say again? There's different and disagreement in the family, sometimes two times. Husband not totally agree with your wife. 
wife not totally agree with the husband. There's a disagreement. There's difference. But because of this, people, they destroy the family, destroy the marriage, unfortunately. Do you understand? Difference, difference. Do you understand? Yeah? You like the sunflower. You like what? Rose. It's different. Sunflower is beautiful. Of course, rose is beautiful. Both of them beautiful flowers. There's a difference. Unique. But unfortunately, because of this uh, difference, uh, they made a very big mistake in all, all of the world. God has brought us together, and there is always a way through. When we hurt each other, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we damage the trust and become the less often. This is the truth. You know, no one tried to damage a husband and wife purposely, intentionally. But unintentionally something happened. How can you overcome? Look at the Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 to 22. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18, verse 19 to 22. Uh, again, I tell you that if you, two of you on earth agree about anything, you ask for it, and it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. It's very important. How many? Two of you on earth agree. Agreement is very, very important. Husband and wife agree for something, and God will answer. Power pray. Do you know that? Yeah? That is why if two of you on earth agree about anything, you ask for it, and it will be done. Verse 20, for where two or three come together in my name, even you and your wife and your children, three or even four, you can agree yeah, in the name of Lord Jesus. And you stay together in the name of Jesus, and there am I with them. Which means you can see the presence of the Lord. If you and your husband, your children, and meeting together yeah, in Jesus' name, God is in there. Amen. God said, I'll be with you. I'm in the midst of your meeting. I think, Elder, you need to start your family meeting. Two or three people, even don't wait for all your family. No. Two is more enough. Two or three. If you two or three people meeting in Jesus' name, Jesus promised, this is the word of Jesus, I'm in the midst of you. You see? Therefore, do you want to see the presence of God meeting together in Jesus' name? You will see the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And then verse 21, the Peter say to Jesus, ask Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy seven times, which means four hundred and ninety times if you calculate, which means unlimitedly you can forgive that man. But don't waiting for your, I mean, don't waiting for the, their, um, their, their request to ask you forgiveness. No, no, don't wait. You should choose forgiveness. It's not optional. You must choose to forgiveness. Can you say amen? If that person not come to you, if that person not come, uh, come to you and ask for forgiveness, no, no, doesn't matter. You are the one to choose the forgiveness and forgive them and good for you. You will be free from bondage of the darkness. Forgiveness is not just an occasional act. It is a permanent act, attitude, as Martin Luther King said. And you can see the number one talking about the hurt. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. I can read for you Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Sorry, here. Yeah. 12, sorry. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, Forgive us our debtors, yet you also have uh, forgiven our debtors. We must tell our husband or wife when and how they have hurt us. We do not need to do in a way that is a harsh or judgmental. Unfortunately, when you speak to husband and wife, harsh and judgmental, this is the main problem. Indeed, you must 
to so gently make it easy as possible for them to apologize. We need to regular or uh, private opportunities to deal with ways we have hurt each other, whether in big or small ways. Yeah? You can often, you can say to your husband, I think what you say is a little bit hurt. Um, you can be hurt. You can express your 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 feeling, and then husband, of course. Oh, I'm so sorry. If I hurt you, please forgive me. Is it? It's good for um, forgive one another. If you do not forgive, it's, it's pain in your heart. Do you understand? Number two, being prepared to say sorry. Can you say sorry? Sorry. <laughs> You know, you have to say to husband and wife, say sorry. If you say to each other sorry, it's very powerful. Most of us do not like to take responsibility for our mistake. To be effective, our apology uh, must be unconditional. Rather than saying, if you had been more reasonable, I would not have lost my temper. Or, if you hadn't made us late, I would not have forgotten, forgotten to post a letter. We need to swallow our pride and say simply, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. This is a very powerful dinner statement. I'm so sorry. Don't try to make any excuse. Just, I'm so sorry, I lost my temper. Or, I'm so sorry, I forget to you know, pass the, uh, the letter. Genuine, unconditional apologize are powerful in marriage because we no longer need to be on, on the defensive way. You don't need to try to defense or try to face away. Do you understand? You are one family in Christ Jesus being prepared to say sorry. Can you say, I'm sorry? It's very powerful when you come before the Lord, I'm so sorry. It's very powerful and when you say to your husband, wife, I, I'm so sorry. It's amazing. Any, any dinner, heart and heart is melt. Yeah, it's amazing healing coming to say sorry. Number three, choosing to forgive each other. Look at Luke chapter seventeen, verse four. Luke chapter seventeen, verse four, say. If he is sinned against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you, say, I repent, forgive him. Do you understand? Seven times come per day and ask for forgiveness. Seven times per day, still forgive. And look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 say, be kind and uh, and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as the, in Christ God forgive you. It's be kind and compassionate to each other and forgive. It's very important to be kind and compassionate and forgive. Can, can you do it in, in your household? Beautiful. Forgiving is beautiful. You can start a brand new life after you forgive one another. Look at the Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, saying, <coughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgive you, you see. And God forgive our sins. Please forgive your husband, forgive your wife, forgive your children, forgive your father and mother, forgive your brother and sisters, forgive. How many of you still not forgive somebody in your life? Anybody still not forgive somebody? How many of you forgive anybody? Can you your hand? Yes, because still the, you forgive anybody, everybody <laughs> able to forgive. It's very important to forgive your sister and brothers, father and mother, anybody in your family. It's important. This is the third and for many most challenging part of the process. Forgiveness is essential and uh, uh, has an um, unparalleled power to bring healing to a marriage. 
1 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 say, As we give up our desire to repay, God promised to look after us to pour upon His blessing into our lives. You can look at your next note page. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. Forgiveness means choosing not to hold the past against each other, you see. What does it mean in forgiveness? Choose not to hold the past against each other. As soon as you go, I forgive you. It's okay. I don't mind. That kind of attitude. Forgiveness has set us free. When you forgive, the forgiveness may benefit our husband or wife. But ultimately, we are the ones who benefit most by being free, actually. You and me are most you know, beneficial because you forgive that person. Only through forgiveness can we, he, liberate from the pain of a previous relationship. Forgiveness is very powerful. It's like the healing power. Really. So many couples, you know, they have pain and hurt and resentment and bitterness in their heart. Why? They don't forgive. Can you forgive one another? It's very important. Do you know, when you forgive one another, what will happen? It's like a deadly poison for all darkness. Satan, learn away from you when you start to forgive. It's important to forgive one another. Forgiveness is satisfied actually. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5, keep no record of wrongs. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about the uh, chapter of love. Yeah? You don't keep the recording of a long, long doing. Yeah? No. And then we start each new day of our marriage with a clean sheet and no backlog. Neither of us will, will be on the attack our defense. You shall then be act in love, keep your record of each other's longings. No more record. No more record. If you record uh, what your husband or wife's doing, um, the mistake, you'll be big trouble. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Some of them some of my husband uh, show me. Oh, yes, I told him, please delay everything. Do you know this husband is right down in his mobile phone. When my wife hurt me, date and time, and what she say. Not on his wife and what his son say. Can you imagine? He showed me the, all the details. His wife's, uh, you know, conversation and date and time. And his son as well. All these things. I told him, brother, can I ask you? Can you delete? Whenever you open the, whenever you open the is a is a mobile phone and saw that this one is angry. <laughs> Do you understand? I said, why you keep the, like the like cancer in your life? Kick out your cancer. Don't keep it. Don't record it over what you know, wrongs he, he done. He has done to you. Remove it. Delete. And in the beginning, no, 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 I need to remember what my wife said to me. Negatively, terribly, I need to remember. I said, please, I'm begging you, delete. I listen, he delete everything. After he delete everything, I ask you, how do you feel? He said to me, it feel better. <laughs> you feel better. It's good to delete all these things. Can you see that then the communication is the key? I think today, and I can finish up to now. Then next and next Wednesday, we're going to start in communication. It's the key. Communication is very very important. What does it mean of prayer? Communication. Pray. communication. Yeah, thank you. Pray, Kevin. Yeah, prayer means communication with Almighty God. Communication is not demanding God to answer me. Answer me. No, no. C prayer is the the communication. You can talk with God. God speak to you, and you can listen. This is a proper communication communication. Tonight, Jesus said, after the resurrected, what did he say? Peace be with you. Peace be with and receive the Holy Spirit. And
forgive one another, please. And I forgive uh, my dear brothers and sisters. Can you forgive me also? Yeah. If I upset you, please. Brother Henry, can you forgive me? Yeah. What did he say? I said I need to ask God. Please do ask God. Then Pastor Paul can come to forgive me. <laughs> no, no, between you and me, I don't talk about that. Uh, There's a two kinds of sin between the before God and before man, actually. Do you understand? Some sins, some sins, uh, some sins uh, against evil. God. So evil in the eyes of the Lord. Some sins between the brother and sister. That is why we need a cross. Do you understand? Between God and you, and then between you and your neighbor, your brother and sister. It's important. If you do not forgive one another, you have a trouble. Number one, you have a bitterness in your heart. You have a pain in your heart. You have a hurt, resentment. And then you are not free from these things. So stressful. Do you know, if you somebody stressful for three years, three years, they can get the cancer easily. Please remember. Peace be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Forgive, Forgive each other. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, help us. We forgive one another. And God forgive all our sins. Oh God, help us to receive your amazing peace. And we have the Holy Spirit. We bless your name. Bless our family, husband and wife and children and father and mother. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, all the unforgiveness, get up from our family in Jesus' name. Yes. Spirit of forgiveness, come upon all our family in Jesus' name. The peace of God, come upon our family in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come upon our family in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Shall you pray together? Just one minute you can pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Something happily for your family right now while you pray. Jesus, we love you. Bless your name. We pray for our <coughs> family right now. Yes, somebody is serious. Something happening right now. Yes, Lord. Be here in our family in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I ask you, Lord, healing come upon our family. Husband and wife in Jesus' name. And seek your face and then touch our brother and sister. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. And you seek your face and then turn away from the wicked way. And God will forgive all our sins. And they heal the land, heal our family. Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for uh, your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the presence of God is within us, Lord. We thank you. And if two or uh, uh, three people gathering together in my name, I am in the midst of you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. Can you touch your heart if you need a peace, if you need the Holy Spirit, if you need the forgiveness in your family? You can touch your heart. I can pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. When Jesus died on the cross and raised up from the dead, and the first day of the week, which is Sunday evening, Jesus spoke to the disciples, Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit and forgive one another. Father God, we need these, these three things every day of our life, especially our family. Anything is a disturbing in our family because we receive the amazing peace all kind of uh, uh, quarrel or disagreement or disunity or anything not things of the go away from our family in Jesus name we receive the amazing peace and the peace of the Lord to control our family in our heart also father we pray let the Holy Spirit take control our family in Jesus name when there is Holy Spirit there's a liberty and freedom Holy Spirit take control us right now Holy Spirit comes on you right now Father, we thank you for forgiveness. We forgive uh, one another, husband and wife. Forgive one another. Parents and uh, children, we forgive one another. And brothers and sisters, we forgive one another. Oh Lord, we thank you for your mercy and grace. And we forgive one another. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow morning, we'll go to the wage and then we we'll go to the New Newport, we we'll go to Hanover Chapel, and then Friday, Moriah Chapel also. Keep on prayer for our journey. 
and pray for mission to Africa from 25th of November to 7th of December. Thank you. God bless you.